So Project Daddy's going to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Yes, Project Daddy's going to win the Nobel Peace Prize. All right. And so every time I say that Project Daddy's going to win the Nobel Peace Prize, people look at Project Daddy like he's an alien or something. You know what? Guess what? Project Daddy is out of this world. Yes. The greatest American alive. 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 And so I was dreaming last night, and all of a sudden, in my dreams, came to me Roy, a Negro named Roy. And I said, Roy, what would you like to say to me? Say hi, Roy. Hi. Roy said, Project Daddy, I got some questions to ask you. And I said, excuse me, Roy, what kind of questions do you have for Project Daddy? And so Roy was like, Project Daddy, you want to win the Nobel Peace Prize and things, but for, for first, I have some questions to ask. So Roy, you can ask me any question you want to ask me, Roy. All right. You ready? Project Daddy, stay ready. You hear me? If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Let's go. All right. First question. I want to know, who is Project Daddy? Man, Project Daddy... Is the ex-vet that lives in the projects, yes? You see, they kicked Project Daddy out of the military because they said Project Daddy was too much. They said, you extra. And so after they kicked Project Daddy out, they said, we can't just put Project Daddy on the streets. And so they sent Project Daddy to the projects. America made me. Project Daddy ain't make Project Daddy. America kicked Project Daddy out on the damn streets and said, we can't leave him there. So they came and picked up Project Daddy. And so I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a vet, and I'm a person who wants to make America, the most bestest place on the whole entire universe. Yes. All right. What are some brand? What are some plans for this brand you created? Man, listen here. Project Day is going to come in. We're going to end poverty in America. And once we end poverty in America, they're going to give me the Nobel Peace Prize and say, Project Daddy, we thank you so much for being uh, American citizen, American patriot. Yes, because most folks don't understand what it's like to live on the streets. You hear me? I want you to describe yourself as a person. I mean, Project Daddy as a person is a, a, a human being, you know, a living, breathing organism. Like, we are so divided right now. Like, if I was to say that Project Daddy is a black man, immediately I alienate 95% of the American population. And so for me to be uh, uh, relatable, yes, I'm just a human being that's, that lives in a place called America. And for that, I have this privilege to be able to speak to you freely. And I, I watch, I'm watching us squander freedom, yes? And I'm like, geez, you're the most powerful citizen the world has ever seen. And it's your responsibility to, like, flex that power, right? And so no one else is going to tell you how powerful you are. And so Project Daddy is the messenger to come and tell you, you are the greatest American alive. Are you content with this life? Happy, angry, sad? <clears throat> I used to look down on people who lived... And, and extenuating circumstances. Yes, poverty is a motherfucker. It is. And right now, poverty is like a death sentence in America. It's almost impossible to climb out. No one wants to talk about the class war that's happening on the poor. And so it wasn't until I got to this place where I was able to just look at my surroundings and it's like, fuck, man, we accept American citizens living in this chaos. And it's absolute nonsense. America has mechanisms that can change the, the the life of these great american citizens immediately but they don't care there is there is a ponzi scheme that's built on poverty in america and it's it's so profitable people are making dollars and i'm like man you're not going to continue to exploit the greatest american life no i'm not going to allow it yes ma'am let's go roy if anything what do you want from life shoot I've driven fast cars. I've been around like fast people. I've done some fast things, yes. And after all that excitement, I would go into the store to buy some cigars to roll up a fat ass blunt, yes. And there'll be a man standing out there, a woman standing out there, may I have a dollar, I'm hungry. And for those people, we act like that's just a normal part of our civilization. And I'm like, that's not normal. That's abnormal. This is someone's mother. This is someone's daughter. This is someone's child. This is the greatest American alive. And me just having the humanity inside my heart, I can't tolerate it. And if no one is going to speak on behalf of the poor, then God dang, there has to be someone. There has to be a voice for those who are voiceless. There has to be someone who's going to stand up and mediate on behalf of those people who don't have access to the media. They deserve so much better. The greatest American life deserves so much better. Do you have any regrets? Man, everything that happened that I thought was something terrible led me to a place of understanding, yes. 
when you don't think that you've done anything wrong, then all of a sudden you become self-righteous. And I don't think that any American person has the right to look down on another American person. I look at all these folks that with dignity because no matter what it is they do, they contribute to this wonderful place that we call America. And that's why I know and I acknowledge because if you didn't live in your van and be separated from your family and endure the struggles of, the, of just the average basic American citizen, then it's hard to have perspective. It's hard to have empathy. And so going through the challenges that I've endured, it taught me something. It taught me that, man, that, that everyone has some value to them. And the system will give you that value. When they send you to prison, they tell you that you're worth at least $30,000 a year. And then you look at the per capita income in America, and it might be $54,000. But, geez, Louise, just for being incarcerated, you're worth thirty. And so when I know that the American citizen has inherent value, that tells me that the system is going to profit off of me whether I say yes or no. And so since I know that, I think it's important for the American citizen to say how they, they get their value. And give me that 30000 Allow me to invest in myself and watch me go ham, yes? Because I'm the greatest American alive and watch me build one of the most amazing economies the world has ever seen, yes? Roy, what you got on your mind, huh? Is there anything you, can, you feel you can improve? Project Daddy? Shoes. Man, Project Daddy can always do more better. Yes. I wake up every day. Yes, I roll my blunt. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think and I meditate and I drink my tea. Right? Then you start journaling and say, Project Daddy, what can you do better today? Yes. And so then Project Daddy begins. You know? Just self-improvement. That's an that's, that's everyday plan. Yes? The relationships you have, being a father, a friend, a family member, could you describe those and their significance? Jeez Louise, those are the most amazing relationships that I could possibly have, yes. Being a son gives me the perspective to know, like, my dad is one of the most amazing human beings the world has ever seen because of the things that he endured. And so when I listen to my father's stories about racism and actually enduring, uh, like, the Jim Crow South, yes, it gives me perspective and it gives me the gratitude to look at how wonderful my life is and how much I can improve uh, the quality of life for my children, yes? And so my children look up to me and they be like, Daddy, yes? <laughs> in their eyes, they light up. In those eyes, they're expecting. My little boys, I have three sons. Project Daddy has three sons, yes? And my three sons are expecting to live in the greatest America the world has ever seen. And Project Daddy's responsibility is to create and facilitate the opportunity for these young men to excel in this wonderful place that we call America, yes? And as far as being a brother, geez Louise, you know, I know that there are responsibilities for all relationships, yes? And so the first thing that I can do is be the best Project Daddy that I can possibly be. Win the Nobel Peace Prize and goddamn celebrate. Hey, Project Daddy in the motherfucking building. Hands up, hands up to the goddamn son, the greatest American alive. You are the greatest American alive. I'm just Project Daddy out here trying to make the America the most bestest America the world has ever been. Yes? There seems to be times where you seem to be under the influence. Why do you feel the need to drink, smoke, etc.? Oh, my goodness, Roy, do you live in America? Have you ever experienced this great thing called anxiety and depression? And these people just sit there and, and, and play with your life like you're just a little doll. Dance, Project Daddy, dance, Project Daddy. As they have their strings on me like they're a motherfucking marionette or some shit like that. And so as you try to motherfucking navigate these obstacles in the United States of America, you do the best that you can. And if, hi, my name is Project Daddy. I am an alcoholic. 90% of alcoholics will never raise their hand and say, I'm alcoholic. They want to go to double A, triple A, whatever the A, 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 Z is. Yes. Tell the truth and get some motherfucking power. Tell some truth to get some motherfucking, hey, get some power. Yes. I miss my children sometimes. And I'm trying to navigate all of the damn financial hurdles that America has to offer. But goddamn, at the end of the motherfucking day, I salute you because I know that you're fighting your exact same struggles. Yes. I know that you're fighting financial battles too. Yes. And so if I had some whiskey on me somewhere, yes, we would say cheers together. But cheers to you, because you are the greatest American alive, yes? Roy, you asked me some hard-ass questions, right? You putting goddamn Project Daddy under fire. Have, have you thought about sobriety? Shit. I think about sobriety between every other motherfucking drink, yes? <laughs> Project Daddy, you know what I'm saying? In between drinks, Project Daddy says, do I want to be sober? 
And then Project J pulls out the flask and says, Sobriety, you can kiss my ass. <laughs> Let's rock, Roy. What brings you joy? Man, the smiles of all of them, of, of all my children, my mother, my brother, my sisters, of you, the greatest American life. You give me joy, yes? Roy, you having the courage to come and sit down with Project Daddy in the hood gives me joy, yes? We, I live in a place, Project Day lives in a place called Dead End, Dead End, Houston, Texas. They actually call this motherfucking place that shit. Imagine how that affects the youth that live in this place. There has to be some type of hope. There has to be someone to jab back and fight back for the greatest American life, kick some ass, take some motherfucking names because we ain't playing no games. Project Day is here to mediate on, be, on behalf of the greatest American life. You are the greatest American alive. You too, Roy. Thank you. <laughs> Name the things that drive you. Goodness gracious. Sometimes, you know, you can look at a person's body and you can see their tattoos right down Project Daddy. Roy said, Project Daddy, you got to get dressed up. Put a, put a coat on, Project Daddy. You know, Project Daddy normally has on overalls, yes, but if I was to take off this coat and you could see my skin, it's tattooed on my flesh. Hope, love, and freedom drive Project Daddy. Hope, love, and freedom. Without hope, man, it's like everything completely ends. And without love, there is no courage to continue to go on and fight for freedom, yes? Who wants to fight for freedom if there's hate in the world, right? I have to find a way to love my fellow citizen, my fellow American, and to continue to push on, yes? Lastly, because mental health is important, and we know there is a stigma around it. Where Good, you goodness gracious, hold on, man. Pause one second. Roy, I wish you would call me crazy. In the middle of the damn dead end, Houston, Texas, Roy, I'll call me crazy if you want to. Project Day don't play. No one's calling you crazy. Thank you, Roy. I appreciate that. But where do you fall in? <laughs> <laughs> if there's a spectrum, Roy, if there's a spectrum, Project Daddy falls on the best side of the spectrum. The most amazing, incredible Project Daddy the world has ever seen, yes? But you, the greatest American alive, if you're struggling with anything, anxiety, depression, man, talk to somebody. And I hope that the person you talk to has the courage to refer you to an actual licensed professional, yes? Project Daddy, as a vet, has had access to the Veterans Affairs Hospital and they come and talk to Project Daddy. They say, Project Daddy, are you okay today? And Project Daddy says, hell no, I'm not fucking okay today. America is in shambles and there's chaos going on everywhere. So much goddamn division. No. And I got to win the Nobel Peace Prize. The stress of these things are driving Project Daddy to tell the Project Prince, don't you never walk into Project Daddy's studio ever again with your phone on. You better put that son of a gun on mute. You hear me? But even though Project Prince violated the rules of the studio, he's still the greatest American alive. I'm listening to you, Roy. I think I'm done. You answered all my questions. Man, Project Daddy ain't never going to be done. The fight for freedom must be progressive, and so Project Daddy's going to continue to fight and keep on jabbing on behalf of you, the greatest American alive, because you deserve a crazy motherfucker to come through the entire system and have uh, institutional awareness. I have institutional comprehension. From the projects to the prison system to being a veteran of the United States of America, I understand the shit that you go through, yes. And so since I can empathize with you, I want to tell you, man, freedom is on the motherfucking way. Maintain your hope, love somebody, motherfucking kiss somebody, and know that you are the greatest American alive, the greatest American alive. 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 The greatest American alive.